Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Pablo and welcome back to the channel. I'm bringing you guys another episode of the Madden 19 Rebuild here on GG Sports. And the Bengals right now are at week five. We're at the bye week, so this is going to be a live commentary as I look through where we are as a team, some of the dilemmas that we face and the decisions that we have to make at week five going into the bye whether or not the Bengals sitting at one and three should be making any changes before we go into the rest of the season. Um, but we're also going to look at some of the other stats and standings around the league so you guys can get an idea of how other teams are doing and who's performing well um, in this franchise. But before we get into that, I just want to call your attention to the top of the screen. You guys see week six, seven, eight, and nine are all winnable games. So right now we're one and three not playing very well but we do have a chance to get everything right back on track and possibly come out five and three after the week nine home game versus the uh browns because we do have four straight home games so that's you know really good anytime you're one and three so we have a chance to bounce back and get back on track uh but before we get into the stats um, that our Bengals have put up, we're going to look at the players who are ready for negotiation of their contract extensions. Number one and our biggest priority, obviously, is going to be A.J. Green. He's prepared to begin negotiations. William Jackson is as well. Tyler Boyd, Giovanni Bernard, and Andrew Billings. I'm not going to be negotiating right now with any of these players during this episode. Uh, I don't feel like looking at the numbers and everything like that right now. Like I said, there's a lot that we have to go over. But uh, the point of showing this is just knowing that these players are uh, willing to negotiate and hopefully resign with us. Um, so moving on now, let's take a look here at our individual stats. Um, and then we'll be going into our schedule to kind of just give a quick discussion on each of our games and what we did well and um you know where we can improve in those games but let's start with andy dalton um our qb stats andy dalton is at around uh 60 percent completion percentage seven touchdowns seven interceptions and just under a thousand yards at 962 and a qbr of 81.8 so this is the definition of an average QB. I mean, he doesn't do too much to put your team over the top, but also doesn't do too much to lose games for your team. Um, so there was a dilemma in the offseason of whether or not I should take a QB and go with a high um, pick at QB, or I'm sorry, go with QB at a high pick, um, and then you know just ride with the rookie mistakes and all or if i should just continue with the average qb of andy dalton and so far uh the decision that i made to stick with andy dalton has not paid off um maybe we should have went qb in the draft but it's not too late for andy dalton to turn it around uh because like i said he has a very nice stretch of four home games after the bye week so i honestly don't anticipate uh benching andy dalton even though he has really taken us out of some games, honestly. I'll get into that later once we look at the schedule. But I do think Andy Dalton's uh, starting job will be safe going into the Week 6 matchup uh, versus the Raiders. Um, and going on to our rushing stats, Mark Walton Jr. is actually leading us with 182 yards on five yards a carry. Giovanni Bernard is behind him at 170 yards, and they're splitting the workload in the absence of Joe Mixon. As you guys know, he's out with a broken collarbone and won't be back um, until around week nine. That's when we're expecting that he'll make his return. Um, and then Andy Dalton actually has ran kind of efficiently at nine yards a carry, 64 yards on the season so far. Uh, but moving on to our receiving yards or our receiving totals, uh, leading us and receiving is going to be John Ross. And he's really been the bright spot of the Bengals. If you look at these games, um, he's been the bright spot. He's been the player that's been most consistent and has improved each week. Uh, so kudos to John Ross. He's making the third year step um, and becoming a solid wide receiver for the Bengals and hopefully he'll keep it up uh throughout the rest of the season aj green 250 yards three touchdowns um only 11 receptions andy Dalton hasn't really played too well so i don't expect aj green's numbers to be very very good 
Um, but Tyler Boyd, a touchdown and 151 yards on 10 receptions. I'm sorry, 11 receptions. But one guy I definitely want to say has been disappointing is CJ Uzama. You guys have seen him miss or drop a lot of easy catches. Um, he's not very good catching the ball after taking hits. I mean, even when he's a wide open, he's not that great at holding on to the ball. Um, I don't see drops as a category, but I wanted to see that he had quite a few. Um, but let's go to the blocking stats. So sacks allowed. Who leads us? It's going to be the rookie Cody Ford. That is not good at all. Uh, we definitely want him to block a little bit better and not allow so many sacks. But our offensive line hasn't played well very much at all. Um, and a lot of the pressure comes from the edges. As you see, Billy Price hasn't allowed a sack. Um, he's played 218 downs, but just doesn't allow very many sacks um, from the D tackle spot, even though that's not a spot you know where you know you're gonna get a lot of sacks out of anyway but kudos to billy price for being the uh most solid part of our offensive line so far this season um but defensively we're going to alec ogletree and what he's been able to do he's leading us in tackles with 23 13 of them solo one sack um on the season as well pierre desir 18 tackles right behind him 11 of them solo um, we're going to take a look at his deflections. He has five on the season, so that's a pretty good start. Um, just about one a game. So um, good job by him. He's been covering very, very well. Um, there are some games where um, we'll allow stats by the wide receiver or catches by the wide receiver, but they're not normally on Pierre Days here. He's been pretty good in coverage this season, and so has William Jackson. He's gotten an interception as well. That was on Big Ben in week two. He also has five deflections. So our cornerbacks are playing pretty well. Um, Drake Kirkpatrick also has an interception with two deflections and 16 tackles, 11 of them solo. Um, so our three corners, I think, are probably the best part of our secondary. Um, our safeties aren't too bad, but um, Sean Williams has 16 tackles, 12 solo. No interceptions. Um, Jesse Bates has no interceptions either. 14 tackles, but Jesse Bates is getting better. He's playing well in coverage, and so is Sean Williams. But I just like where our, our cornerbacks have been able uh, to play all season or the level that they've been able to play at all season. Um, but Trey Lamar, the rookie middle linebacker out of Clemson, has 15 tackles this season, one for loss, one interception. Uh, no deflections, um, but he's playing pretty well. He's made a few plays here uh, when he does get snaps. Of course, as you guys know, he's splitting time with uh, Alec Ogletree. We rotate Vontez Burfick in sometimes as well. So he's not playing every snap, but he is making an impact on the snaps that he does play. Um, Geno Atkins, 14 tackles, no sacks. Actually, one sack, I'm sorry, um, on the season. Let me just actually sort by stats. Uh, sack so we can see who has sacks on the season. Nobody has more than one, but it will be Ogletree, Lamar, Atkins, Vigil, and Carl Lawson who have gotten sacks uh, so far on the season. So none by Carlos Dunlap. Dunlap honestly has been a non-factor so far this season. Um, seven tackles, five tackles for loss though, um, but not much else. No sacks or anything like that to report for him. But kicking-wise, Randy Bullock, he's 7 for 9. Surprisingly, he's only missed two. But uh, extra points, he's also missed two of those. So four in all through four games. I actually might make that change this uh, episode. I may sign a kicker. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know if I should get rid of him because his uh, attributes aren't too bad. Uh, but I think that's really all we have to look at as far as stats. Um, like I said, we're going to take a look at our schedule. Let me see. Here we are. All right, so week one, that was an impressive win. Um, just to recap this season very briefly. Um, that's a game we should have won in regulation. Let's just see if we can put together any reason why we won this game. I mean, Andy Dalton did have a QB rating of 115. I'm sure that has something to do with it, throwing four touchdowns. So the more I look at this team, the more I see that they go as far as the red rifle will take them. 
Um, so if he's playing well, the team will play well. But I feel like the running game, Andy really heavily depends on that. Um, but in this game, we still were unable to cover the tight ends and running backs out of the backfield. Ricky Seals Jones, two touchdowns, six receptions, 60 yards on us. Um, Golden and Tate, you see, as I mentioned earlier, um, our cornerbacks played pretty well because Golden and Tate was held to only four receptions for 44 yards. Um, Christian Kirk, 46 yards. You know, so our uh, cornerbacks played pretty well. Um, let's just see, defensively. Of course, it was Alec Ogletree leading us in tackles. So I think um, when you look at the one win we had all season, the main thing was Andy Dalton played well. Um, even though in that game, I believe he threw a pick six. Um, and I think he did in this game versus the Steelers as well. So his um, touchdown to interception ratio was negative in this one. Only 231 yards, although he only did get sacked twice in this game. Um, Le'Veon Bell just ran rampant on this defense so i mean it was a combination of andy Dalton and then the defense but in this game it's antonio brown he was able to put up some crazy numbers i believe he had a 56 yarder as well so outside of that he didn't dominate um but our corners did a good job outside of him because let's see smith schuster was held to two receptions for 16 yards so um you know, like I said, our corners play pretty good, but that might be the best uh, spot of our defense, our cornerbacks. Um, but, I mean, hey, Andy Dalton really just has to get it together for us to win games. So we're going to the Browns game now. Let's take a look at his stats. No touchdowns. Lost that game by three points. If he just throws one touchdown and doesn't turn it over twice, we win the game. You know, so even if he turns it over twice and throws a touchdown, we win that game. So, um, I don't know, man. Andy just really has to get his play together, and then I think we'll be fine going forward in the rest of the season. Um, again, it was a game where the tight end really put up numbers versus us. Uh, Njoku, six receptions, was the go-to receiver for Baker Mayfield in this game, although it was Chris Conley who gashed us for a huge um 59 yard game uh, or 59 yard touchdown I should say so uh, we really just have to you know play better covering the tight ends covering the running backs and then Andy Dalton has to play better so that's what I'm seeing when I'm looking at these games um, not even gonna look at the Dolphins one for too long but in this game Andy Dalton two touchdowns had a good QB rating but our defense in this game allowed Ryan Tannehill to throw three touchdowns. King and Drake ran for almost 100 yards. So our defense played well versus the Browns, then came back down to earth. And, of course, again, it's the tight end tearing us up for over 100 yards. So I think we know what the issue is. It's just a matter of fixing it and putting someone on the tight end and figuring out a scheme where we can, you know, overcome that. Um, but quickly, before we get out of this screen, I'm just going to take a quick look at the uh, remaining schedule as we said earlier we have the 49ers Raiders Bills Browns Jets as well the Jags who you know are questionable um, you have the Patriots Steelers Rams Ravens Seahawks Ravens so it's going to get tough toward like the last five or six games of the season but we really have to come out and reel off a win streak versus these teams that we should be able to win against um, so I think we'll be in good position if we're able to do that um but now let's take a look at the standings to see what teams are playing well number one in the nfl undefeated there's three remaining undefeated teams you have the chargers cowboys and steelers um couple teams with one losses it's going to be the eagles jags falcons seahawks patriots jets are actually three and one um chiefs are all three and one. So Chiefs, Jets, Pat, Seahawks, Falcons, Jags, and the Eagles are all three and one playing well. Uh, let's see some of the disappointing teams as these are the two and two teams here. It's pretty early. So we'll see, you know, how that pans out for these two and two teams. But some of the disappointing teams obviously are going to be us. Um, one and three Vikings are all and four. Interesting. And the Lamar Jackson era is not working out so far. They're 0-4 in Baltimore. 
So I don't know that those could be two easier games than you know I really anticipated playing against them if they're 0 and 4. Uh, the Broncos also 0 and 4. Giants still don't have it together 0 and 4. 49ers don't have it together, and neither do the Colts at 0 and 4. Um, so that's very interesting. So let's now take a look at the league leaders. So it looks like the team to beat right now is going to be the San Diego Chargers. Um, as we just took a look at the standings. So looks like Ryan Fitzpatrick plays for the Patriots. And I'm assuming, let me just take a look at this right now. Um, I'm assuming that Tom Brady retired, but let me just confirm that. Did he go out with a Super Bowl victory? Let's see. Pats. Gronk is still there. Okay. <laughs> so, Tom Brady must have retired. And they replaced him with Ryan Fitzpatrick. They did draft Ryan Finley out of North Carolina State. But I guess they think he's not ready yet. So, they wanted to bring in Ryan Fitzpatrick. And let's go back to the stats. Oh. Let me go back to the stats and see how that's working out for the Pets. Um, player stats. Let's go to NFL. Looks like he's leading in passing yards. Um, so Ryan Fitzpatrick, eight touchdowns, one interception, playing under Belichick. So Ryan Fitzmagic plus Brian Belichick. <laughs> that that has to be a lethal combo right there. Um, but right behind him, as far as passing yards go, is Jared Goff. Nine touchdowns to one interception. Matt Ryan also putting up pretty good numbers. Seven touchdowns to one interception on 70% completion. Um, Matthew Stafford always throws for a lot of yards, but his uh, touchdown to interception ratio is even at six touchdowns, six interceptions. Uh, but <clears throat> Excuse me, Baker Mayfield, six touchdowns, four interceptions. Two of those were versus the Bengals. What we're actually going to do is just sort by passer rating. So, Teddy Bridgewater threw two passes. He obviously doesn't count. Deshaun Watson has the best rating out of starting QBs at 135.3. Doesn't throw too many passes, though, apparently. Um, and then Dak Prescott playing with the undefeated Cowboys has a QB rating of 130 um, with over a thousand yards and 14 touchdowns to one interception. That is crazy. Dak Prescott is having a career year right now. So that's definitely something we want to keep an eye on as we go throughout the season. Will Greer obviously isn't playing too much, um, only threw five passes on the season. Tyrod Taylor, you guys saw he still hasn't thrown an interception this season. 12 touchdowns. He torched us. He got off to a very good start versus us, but it's uh, comforting to know that he's doing that to everybody in the league because no one has been able to pick him off just yet, and his QB rating is at a total of 122.2. So kudos to Tyrod Taylor for playing at the level that he is playing at right now. Um, but we're going to take a look at the rushing totals. Number one and rushing our yards is going to be Ezekiel Elliott uh, with four touchdowns. So Dak and Ezekiel Elliott are taking their play to a next level. And the Cowboys are playing very well right now. They're undefeated. Le'Veon Bell's also still playing at a high level. Christian McCaffrey with 386 yards so far. Um, but Le'Veon Bell with five touchdowns is, you know, clearly the number you want to look at for him. Um, here are the rest of the numbers. Tevin Coleman in his new home in Oakland is playing well with 338 rushing yards so far. Saquon still playing, uh, still playing solid. Mark Ingram going to the division rival uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers from the Saints is at 299 yards rushing on the season with two touchdowns. So some interesting moves that were made this offseason. Um, let's see who else is playing well. Aaron Jones, um, definitely a solid running back. Carry on Johnson. 
Devontae Freeman now has full reins in Atlanta without Tevin Coleman breathing down his neck and splitting carries with him. Um, Peyton Barber actually went to the Saints from the Bucks as well. So it's like they just traded running backs. Um, and he has 242 yards so far on the season. But we're going to move on to receiving now. Let's take a look and see who's playing well. Number one in receiving yards is going to be Robert Woods. It's only four weeks, so this is likely going to change. Cam Meredith is behind him with 245. Or actually, I wouldn't even sort it. That's my mistake. Number one in receiving yards is going to be Julio. Number two is Amari. So the Cowboys, they're just firing on all cylinders right now. So right now, I'm sure a lot of Super Bowl picks are going to be the Cowboys and the Chargers. So... We'll take a look and uh, monitor that situation throughout the season. Uh, but we have pretty much no one on this list except for John Ross. Uh, we're going to continue to feed him the ball and allow him to make plays. But um, here is how he stacks up versus the rest of the league in receiving yards. But Josh Gordon is back on the field with the Patriots and Ryan Fitzpatrick. So that's another interesting situation. I can't wait to play them later this season. That's going to be a really fun game. Um... But that's pretty much it for stats. Well, we can take a quick look at defensive stats before I get all the way out of stats. Let's take a look here. Defense, who leads the league and tackles is going to be Joe Scobert from the Browns. And then who leads the league in sacks is going to be Chandler Jones. He went ham versus the Bengals, got off to a good start, and is now leading the league in sacks, tied with Brian Arakpo, who really retired in real life. But... Um, not too much I can do about him playing on this game. Um, who else? You have Aaron Donald with 3.5. And then Kenny Clark, the D-tackle, playing for Green Bay with 4. Um, David Irving with 3. A couple other guys with 3 as well. Um, let's see. Interceptions. Anybody have multiple interceptions? It's like Danny Trevathan playing middle linebacker is picking off QBs. He has 3 and is leading the league so far. And then Prince of Mukamara playing for Chicago has two. A couple of other guys got two. Xavier Rhodes, Jalen Smith, Jamal Adams from the Jets, TJ McDonald, and Preston Brown, uh, former Bengal, now Miami Dolphin, also got one of his picks versus Andy Dalton. But moving on now, before we go ahead and close out this episode, uh, we're just going to take a look at the weekly awards, who's been balling each week. Uh, these are some of the players you may expect to see on these lists. Tyrod Taylor, um, we talked about how well he's played. You have Danny Trevathan, who caught two of his interceptions in one game, which would explain why he leads the league right now. And then, let's see, week three, it was Aaron Rodgers, Kenny Vaccaro, Deshaun Watson, and Brian Arakpo. And then week two, Jared Goff, Ryan Kerrigan, Phillip Rivers, and Joe Schobert. Um so those are the players who have been playing pretty well um, and won those awards. And I think that's pretty much going to be it um, for this episode. I showed you guys where the Bengals are right now. Some of the other players who are playing well. Um, to finish out the episode, I'm just going to say I'm not going to be benching Andy Dawn. I'm going to keep him in as the starter. Um, next week, we play the San Francisco 49ers who haven't won yet, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double-check that. I don't think they've won, so I really feel like we have a good chance of coming in and getting things back on track and moving to 2-3. and three. And then going from there, um, I think we'll be able to get it on track. So if we lose this game to the 49ers, I think that will be the time where we should put the panic uh, button, where we should hit that and maybe do some things like bench Andy Dalton or make some changes. But... We're going to allow him one more chance to go out versus the winless 49ers and try to get a W. But I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're new. This has been a long episode. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.